firstly, I lost my uh, voice a few days ago, so I'll try not to do it to read them in and have a cough and fit or lose my voice right now. Um, I've got my fishermen and friends on my board, so I should be okay. When I decided to speak, I had no clue what I was going to say. Uh, there's many stories I could tell, quotes I could quote. I can't say them all. Uh, she was an amazing woman, so it was quite hard. I didn't want to be soppy, because I might cry. I didn't want to make you cry. And at the end, you'll find out why I can't be right. So, I thought I'd speak about what she gave me most, apart from love. Inspiration. My nan, has been, my nan may have been small in height, but she certainly made up for it in personality and character. She was a mum, she was a sister, an auntie, a cousin. She was Denise to many, Mrs Morton to a few. A woman who never gave up. She took no, never took no for an answer. Even a few weeks before she died and they started talking about stopping treatment, she wouldn't accept that. She kept on fighting. She fought to get on to the last round of treatment. She was a fighter. She was tough. And sorry to stay all the same, but she was a bloody difficult woman, she was. <laughs> Even when Grandad passed, she fought on. She stood on her own two feet and carried on. It was the only way to be. She fought with what was right and to make people's lives better. She was a woman who loved, guided, inspired, motivated me and more around her. She taught me about giving back to the community, being part of charities, big or small, and the impact they do make on people's lives. The motivation my dad, my brother, myself and many more is inspired by my nan's determination to never give up. At work I'm told I don't understand the word no. I often told no, something is impossible, or no, there isn't enough time, and I say yes, it will happen, watch me. Now this is a common trait of us, Morton, we're all a stubborn lot. Determination comes, doesn't come from my education, or lack of. It doesn't come from my close friends, it comes from one person, my nan. Nan never gave in. Eleven years ago, she was diagnosed with myeloma. She was told she'd be lucky to last seven. She lasted eleven. This is that doctor now. And in fact, she outlived that doctor. <laughs> now, most people get told when they have cancer, they maybe cut a commitment or two, but not now. She took on even more. She carried on as chairman of Staffordshire Federation WIs for a large part of it, and even taken a part-time role in the office for part of it. She carried on inviting half the family round for larger dinners, you'll hear more about this later. She carried on travelling the world with Grandin for many of these years, and carried on running, helping run her local WI branches, and even took a brief stint on the Arts Festival. She never gave up. Just a few months ago, I was sitting by, beside her at the hospital bed, and she said to me, as soon as we get over this spell, we're going to go to Auschwitz. And Nan's always wanted to go to Auschwitz, but Granda didn't. And she always said that me and her one day would go. And sadly, and there, was, there and then, I was looking at prices for it, but sadly, it didn't happen. I'd often talk to Nan about many things. It should be the first point of call about career plans or what I wanted to do. I used to talk to her about my arguments with my brother, and just general life advice. She always seemed to have an answer. She was understanding when I was in trouble at school, supported me when I dropped out of college. She would support me for anything I wanted to do, whether it carpentry or politics. When I achieved something, I'd call her up or run across the road and said, I did it, and she would always be so proud. And she was a nan, but she was also my best friend and number one supporter. When I wake up on a cold, dark morning and I've got my hour of commute ahead of me, I used to think, why am I doing this? But the thought that my grand, who would be 78, would be up, having breakfast, sitting watching this by this time, and I'm still lying in bed, used to do the trick. She was incredibly proud of my career in politics, having taken photocopies of everything I've ever appeared in, read every letter a politician has ever sent me, word for word, quizzed me on the latest going on every time I saw her, and she never, certainly never forgot to tell me how proud she was. I know she would have been proud when I received my Outstanding Achievement Award at work last weekend, and I wish she was still here for me to tell her. I'd not be where I am today without her guidance, support, for the tough times and the good. She was a proud mum, always talking about Dad and how proud she was of him. And when Dad and I had our bad patch, she would tell me about Grandad and Dad's bad patches, and it wasn't too bad at all. And she was proud of Matt, of course. She never quite got over how he decided on his career but supported them 100%. Matt sat down one night in the living room and then said, what are you going to do, Matt? You've got to be back at school in a few weeks. You're smart, you've got good grades. Surprises at me. <laughs> at this point, he'd gone through everything possible. He was going to study physiology, be a mathematician, 
I knew he was being in the army at one point. But that replied, just sat there, casually said, I'll milk cows, I'll be a farmer. And that's it. Next week he applied for agriculture college and he's never looked back since. Now, Nan found this last minute in the moment thinking a bit hard to grasp, but was proud of him either way. Especially when he flew to Australia at the start of this year. Now, she missed him greatly and would often ask when I saw her what he posted on social media and if he was okay. I'd obviously have to filter his answer, of course, because anyone who knows Matt, that was very Nan friendly. <laughs> Nan did a lot with her life. Um, from working with BTs as a teenager, teaching, cooking, and needlework, and running the hotel and restaurant, or travelling the world with grandmother. My proudest moment was when she received her OBE. She was honoured to receive it, but in a typical Nan fashion, said she didn't want the Queen, she's met her twice, she wanted one of the boys. <laughs> she had to settle with Princess Anne, but she liked it anyway. So I cut short my holiday, went from the Isles of Sully, trained from Penzance to London, to meet Dad, um, Div, and now, Matt couldn't make it as it was his graduation, or nearly not, but that's a whole different story, I'm sure it's right <laughs> We all got dressed up, Nan in her baby pink suit, two boots, me in my favourite suit, and we arrived at Bickham and Buckingham Palace. VIP, VIP treatment, thanks to Viv in the wheelchair. Front row seats, thanks to Viv in the wheelchair. Well, the moral of the story is you go to Buckingham Palace and take a wheelchair. <laughs> And one of man's proudest moments was making Princess Anne smile in her investiture as they spoke briefly and carried on. After the investiture, we were one of the last to leave the palace. And Dad pulled out of Buckingham Palace gates in his black Audi. We were mobbed by tourists, thinking Nan was the Queen. <laughs> they banged on the car doors and took photos for it. It was a bit like paparazzi, but okay, we made it. And we ended that day at Codsell Fish and Chip Shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. So anyone who's ever been to the farm who's ever been invited for Sunday lunch would know my nan was a great cook, but also there was never an answer. It started around 12.30, the table would be set for anything from 10 to 20. It would be roughly a sack of potato placed through about three massive casseroles, enough veg to feed an army. It didn't stop there, multiple meats, roast potatoes, homemade sauces, chutneys, all to go, wine along. Oh, you dig in, your plate would be sky high. Well, at least Matt's and mine was. And when, as everyone slowly finished, you'd hear, Josh, pass Uncle Ted the potatoes, he could do some more. Roger, Matt, he wants some more cabbage. And before they knew it, the plate was full again, and no one definitely wasn't the answer. And then there was dessert. Now, Nan used to talk about a family member, I can't quite remember, who used to do a dessert per guest. And Nan wasn't quite that bad, but I never knew less than three, normally four or five offers. Cheesecake to tea and risu, homemade of course. Dessert was compulsory and second highly recommended. John, you'll have some more jelly. I've made that special for you. I had written Trev and cheesecake at this point, but if anyone knows Trev, he'll have finished the cheesecake first time round. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it didn't stop there. Everyone would go into the lounge and chat away for the afternoon, have your 30 minute smooth for the old ones. But while that's happening, Nan would be in the kitchen again. And as everyone got darker and everyone decided, oh, it's time to go home. No, the second piece begun. As she'd start to leave the door, you'd notice there was a plate, a table covered in salads, crisps, fresh bread, homemade, grown Greek tree, and the rest. And it was ready for round two. I've never quite worked out why I'm not obese, to be honest, but it certainly tasted good, and I'm sure you'll agree. Now, when I told Matt I was going to speak at the funeral, he said he wanted to too. I said, what on earth are you going to speak about, Matt? You can't be crude, you can't sway. It's, uh... Anyway, <laughs> here he goes, this is what he's going to say. It was a cold winter morning. The yard was covered in ice, like concrete. Matt goes running across the yard to feed the geese. Before he knew it, his ice skating skills weren't as good as he thought. He face down, flat in a frozen puddle. Knees grazed, he did what all seven-year-olds did. He screamed, he cried, and went running for now. After a quick look over, Nan realised he hadn't actually heard. He wasn't actually heard. And she said to him, Matthew, crying is energy wasted, which you could be using to be happy. Now Matt at this point was probably a bit stuck, looked at him, Nan a bit puzzled, as all the seven years would. But she's got a point. She's right. Life is too short to be sad. Time is our most precious commodity, and you should never waste it. You can never look back. You can never go back in time. You can't buy more of it, and once it's gone, it's gone. 
So don't dwell on the past, think of the future. Nan lived a happy life, seen more than the world of most. She married the love of her life and experienced so much of the world had to offer. Always remember the happy times, but forget the sad. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.